Um, thank you. Thank you, Gay. Uh, first, uh, just two preliminary notes. I appreciate the point that uh, Cal Garrison made that I expected I was to, to give a speech, but the uh, conversations this morning have, have been wonderful, and I certainly want to be sure that I leave time for conversation and, and questions. And secondly, as you notice here, I'm using uh, PowerPoint. Uh, I gave a lecture, basically a version of this lecture a few weeks ago at uh, Western Michigan University and for the first time used PowerPoint. Some people love it, some people hate it. So again, I, I give you the choice. If it's helpful, you can follow the lecture that way, and if it, you don't like PowerPoint, ignore it. Um, <laughs> In being invited here, I uh, tried to remember the last time I was in this neck of the wood, and it was almost exactly 40 years ago. I was coming back from um, a week spent in Mississippi, participating in the uh, Freedom Bowl, and I took a bus up to uh, Lexington, had run out of money by that point, was going to hitchhike back to uh, New York City, where I was going to school. And I got picked up a little north of here by a soldier from uh, Alabama. As soon as I got into the car, he starts telling me, uh, what do you do if he ever got his hands on one of those um, blankety-blank white car students going down south making trouble? Okay, so, um, so that's, that's, uh, that's the last time I was uh, in this neck of the wood. I'm happy to be back under a more positive circumstances. Uh, and I'm particularly happy to be at uh, Eastern uh, Kentucky University because I've been leading the work of any number of the faculty here over a period of many years and learning something from them. Hope people can learn something from me. Um, I sometimes get curious about why people get interested in the things that they're interested in. I'm talking about white collar crime. I've also been interested in, as mentioned, crimes of the state. And as is true of some of the older members of the audience, um, my seminal shaping experience was in the 1960s and early 70s. I took my first criminology course with Richard Quinney in 1966. <coughs> Quinney was one of the uh, first PhD students to write a dissertation on white collar crimes, very uncommon at that time. And then, of course, I started teaching in 1968, and I think all of you know the late 60s, the early 70s was a period of turmoil, the Vietnam War, and Watergate, and all of that. And what it, uh, the effect it had was to uh, call attention to uh, crimes of the powerful, crimes of the, the rich. So that, that's a basis of my interest in that. I'll also be talking about globalization and um, the postmodern. Uh, Postmodern and postmodern thought became one of the buzzwords of the late 80s and early 90s. I became interested in it uh, to some extent at that point in time. And then over the last 10 years, globalization in particular has been one of the buzzwords of our time. It was invoked any number of times this morning already. Uh, and so I became interested in that uh, as well. Finally, uh, as another introductory note, uh, it's should be obvious that the, the focus of my lecture is uh, quite broad, and I've always had a kind of fatal attraction to macro-level social phenomena. I'm not talking about 15-year-old uh, sh shoplifters in Lexington, uh, Kentucky. It's got a very broad uh, focus. I say a kind of fatal, fatal attraction because uh, you get yourself in a lot of trouble when you're interested in these macro-level uh, phenomena, but that's, that's what's happened to me. Uh, what I won't do, I, I won't give you a uh, formal uh, theory. Um, uh, this is very useful, formal, testable uh, theory. I've written about theory. There's theory, theoretical implications in my work, uh, but uh, that's not what I will offer you. I'm not going to offer you a report on some empirical research. Uh, empirical research, I've read a great deal of it. I've learned a lot from it. Uh, but again, that isn't what I have done, and I'm not going to offer a, a systematic policy analysis. I think my talk has policy implications, and I've been interested in policy questions, but again, that hasn't been the focus of my work. My, my work has really taken the form of uh, addressing definitional, conceptual, and typological issues. Um, Gary Potter spoke about my the two books. Both of them are kind of mappings of the terrain. That's really what I've been trying to do, map the terrain of what we know about white-collar crime as control, and in the Law in Our Lives book, map 
the terrain of socio-legal scholarship. And I guess I have a bias here. I think that this kind of work is necessary as a foundation to the other kinds of projects. In other words, if you're going to offer formal theories, you're going to do empirical work, you're going to offer policy analysis, you first, it's like building the basement of the house, you have the foundation of it, it seems to me, is work through the definitional conceptual issues, locate your work in a larger framework. So I like to think uh, this work is useful and helpful in some way, and perhaps if it weren't, um, I wouldn't be here. So I, I guess some people do find it uh, helpful. Now, the work specifically draws upon uh, work I did in connection with the two editions. The second edition came out in August of uh, Trusted Criminals, and I've done related work on white-collar crime, partly for uh, Gary Potter's book. Um, I collaborated on an article published exactly 10 years ago in Criminology with my good friend Marty Schwartz on postmodern thought and criminology. So I got involved uh, in that subject at that time. And as I have said more recently, I got interested in globalization and what I call crimes of globalization, published an article two years ago on social justice. I'll say a little more about the background of that a little further on down the road. And I presented uh, a version of what I'm talking about here at the World Congress of Criminology in Rio in uh, August, last August, and Brazil seemed a particularly appropriate uh, locus for talking about issues of globalization and crime because Brazil today is really very much in the vortex of many of these major issues of globalization that have been uh, referred to. Now, one of the things that uh, has already been involved in, this, in these conversations in several presentations this morning already are the erosion of boundaries. And so that's indeed one of my themes, the boundaries, temporal boundaries between different periods of time eroding, geographic boundaries between different parts of the world eroding, academic boundaries between different uh, areas uh, are eroding. And white collar crime by its very nature uh, is a transdisciplinary topic. That might be true of a lot of topics, but it's particularly true of white collar crime. Any decent understanding of white collar crime has to draw upon knowledge from many different disciplines, political science, economics, management science. A recent example is an emerging science of networks, okay? So it's very much of a transdisciplinary phenomenon. Uh, another way boundaries are eroding, uh, I think that Gary Potter addresses this. Uh, I know that my friend Jay Albanese addresses this as the erosion of uh, boundaries between white collar crime, organized crime, mafioso type of crime, and what was traditional forms of professional crime. So that's another way we can see erosions of boundaries. Within criminological uh, theory, uh, and so a, a particularly useful contribution now has been made by Pete Krasko, who's looked at criminal justice theory. I've, I've learned a lot from his book. I suppose people know that, but another book I've learned from and that goes to the heart of this, of course, is uh, Greg Barrack's attention to uh, integrated theories, that, that the, the erosion of boundaries between different kinds of theories. I think that's a very important, very important contribution. I've learned, learned a lot from that. Now, the literature of criminology has traditionally uh, not uh, had uh, a great deal of uh, interaction with the, the very large literatures, particularly since the 19. 80s on postmodernism and the postmodern, and particularly in the last 10 years, a huge and growing literature on uh, globalization. But one of my themes is that the boundaries between these literatures should evolve uh, going, going forward. One of the reasons, I think, for a certain resistance to all of this is that we live in, among other things, a, a period of time called the information age, where we are absolutely overloaded with all kinds of information and knowledge. I'm sure that students, graduate students here can identify with that. And one of the effects of that is that a way of dealing with that is to kind of compartmentalize, compartmentalize your approach to an understanding of something. But ultimately that is uh, artificial and distorting because the reality of a complex world is that those kinds of boundaries and demarcation lines that we create uh, are false. 